Everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward, joined again by uh, future NFL draft pick in about uh, two months and former Ohio State linebacker Pete Warner. Uh, looking ahead to that future, the Buckeyes have to replace you, Pete. And one guy that I think I've circled that I'm looking forward to and hoping to get your thoughts on here today is Dallas Gant. Had a little bit of an opportunity to get some reps and experience with you guys in the Silver Bullets uh, the last couple years, but he's probably going to have to take in a much bigger role for these Buckeyes moving forward. Can he do it? Uh, yes, he can. He's been there for a while now, so he's he's had uh, a lot of time to sit back and watch the older players, and it's his time to step up. And he's a really smart guy. He knows the defense very well. He's a great leader. So stepping in and taking that spot, he's he's definitely he's ready for it. And uh, I know that um, just watching him uh, progress as a young guy up until he is now, um, he'll be ready to um, to step up, fill the gap, and um, show what the Silver Bullets are about. You know, it's something that you know you've talked about with your own game, and we saw your ability to play inside, outside. Um, I'm not sure if Dallas has done that a lot in practice or in games. I mean, does he have that same sort of cross, cross training, cross positional flexibility that that you guys need there? I think he does. He does, and um, depending on what the scheme is going to look like on the defensive side for Ohio State, I don't know where he's going to line up every play. I don't know how they're going to show his versatility, but he definitely has the potential. And he's an athletic kid, very smart kid. So um, based off of the scheme and where they put him in, he's definitely going to execute. And you, you were here for so long in that starting lineup, you and Tuff and Barron and Justin Hilliard. I'm sure that these younger guys were probably ready for you guys to go. Like, they had to wait a long time to play. Was there ever you – know, what was that dynamic like in that meeting room when you, you guys were so entrenched and played for so long and these younger guys wanted to play? Like, was that ever hard to manage? It was because we have so much talent in that linebacker room. I mean, you have so much talent, you can only play a certain amount of guys on the field. And you wish you could play all, but it just doesn't work like that. Um, so these guys are ready. I'm tell, I tell you that they're ready. And um, it's a tough, competitive school like Ohio State. There's guys that – might not show up till their senior year, but then they have these breakout years that lead them to playing well at the next level. That's just how it is. It's so competitive, but thankful for these guys and how they've progressed and played um, as far as practice, even in the games that they participated in, they, um, they, they, came, they came and showed up. Um, so I'm just excited um, to see what they're going to show this uh, coming year. All right, we've got some of that to break down a little bit of Dallas Gant getting on the field last season for the Buckeyes. A couple big plays. I think number 20 was out there at times with him as well. We're going to break that down right now with Pete Warner. Let's roll the tape. All right, Pete, as we've talked about Dallas Gant, he's waited for that opportunity. Sometimes it comes late in fourth quarter against Nebraska. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, due to injuries or other things and other games later on. But when you get – whenever that opportunity is at Ohio State, that next man up mentality that you all talk about, you've got to make the most out of it. And this was uh, an early chance last year for Dallas Gant to get his hand on the football. Yes, it was, and he made a great play here. Uh, the thing about Dallas is you got to credit him so much because he's coming in the game. Uh, after all the adjustments that we make during the game, he has to stay locked in. He has to stay close to the huddle, to all the linebackers, and listen to what's going on. What are they doing? Right. And if he might only get the five reps, maybe not nothing and during the game, but he's staying in there. He's, he's paying attention. Um, and he's ready to go, and he's made a big impact later in these games um, just because he loves the game. Um, he wants to make an impact, and uh, he's going to at the next level. So this one, he, he, um, there was a stretch play, and he is uh, running out and gets a hand on the ball, knocks it out, and a, a big takeaway for the Buckeyes here, which is um, he gets off a block here of the big, big O-line. He's rated pretty high. He's a good player gets both of those off, sheds it, and then gets a hand on the ball, which is which is a great play by him. How much of this when that ball actually comes out is just luck and how much of it is technique? Um, it's – I mean, that's hard to say. It is – we obviously are trying to get the ball. And this one, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he does see it, so I think he, he tries to hit it out here. Um, but we do have drills to get the ball out, but there's other times where we just get lucky. I know that there's been a few times where the ball comes out with some of the hits I've had, and I'm just like, I, I don't know what happened there. I mean, <laughs> the ball came out, and uh, let's go. Let's, uh, let's go sit down. Let's go uh, um, watch the offense do work. But this one, um, I, think, I think he saw it. All right. And here's an example of 
just the importance that you guys always talked about. You're one of the better run defenses in the country again last year, uh, and it tends to be those silver bullets flowing to the football. What what stands out to you if you watch this one in Dallas game, trying to get down there and make a play at Michigan State? Yeah, so we have a very we're a very aggressive we're very aggressive linebackers, and as you see the ball, it's not he's feeling contact when he's th- when it's three yards back of the line line of scrimmage right. so right. we're very aggressive we try to plug those gaps up to get the line off the to get the guys off the d line so they can they can get those one-on-one blocks so they can go off and make a tackle so as you see us so aggress- aggressive on this the running back has nowhere to go every gap is covered because we plugged it so early so got, dallas approaches this super well um sees a fit and then makes a play on the running back this is a very good job by him especially with this tfl here um, and, and this is a third and three. This is a big play here. That's, I think that's an example there uh, of some of this work inside, some doing that same sort of stuff that you did last year. Um, yep. you know, we've seen tough forward, obviously do that for a long time. But you guys, no matter if you're playing inside or outside, right, you still got to be able to drop back in coverage a little bit. Um, this one seems like, uh, you know, it's just a modest gain, right? But yep. it's also key. Because this is what you probably were willing to give up here, right? Take me through the mentality, the responsibilities here. Yeah, so we're, we're reading runner pass, and we get a heavy pass read here. So we're dropping to our landmarks. And we want to set when the quarterback sets. So he wants to get his feet in the ground by the time the quarterback has set. So as he sets, he does a great job getting to his landmark, seeing where the quarterback's eyes are melting off the quarterback, and then he makes a great open field tackle here. As you see, I think that is barren on the outside. We're always trying to create a vice in our zone coverages um, to tackle the football. We don't want one guy trying to tackle the football in his own coverage, especially when it's thrown underneath like this. So he does a great job getting to his landmark and breaking his feet down and making a great open field tackle here, having a great drop and drives him back. That's a really good play by Dallas. Yeah, you can certainly live with that on second 18 because they throw for two yards, they get two yards. Uh, this is more of just some of that responsibility where you have to uh, flow to the football, read and react, as you guys always say. Yeah, so this is a this is kind of like this toss play. They're in a bunch set. Um, Dallas does a great job of getting off this tight end. Um, he does a great job getting off this tight end. He sees the ball cut back in this. When you over pursue the ball, and you've seen us as a defense over pursue the ball, there's always that cut back lane. So you got guys over pursuing. You see me here, kind of take a miss at him because I had nobody blocking me. It was, it was all me. I didn't see him. I didn't think he saw me. So I'm trying to take the hit. Um, (laughs) But yeah, it's cut back and we know it's going to cut back because we have so much penetration. Our defense aligned just so well with penetration on the front side. We know it's going to cut back early. So we got to have a lot of guys with their belt buckle on the ball, like we say, so we can get the guy down. And this is a second Nate. He does a good job getting off the block. Um, And if he, if he's not there getting off the block, it could be a, it um, it could have been um, run for a little bit more, but he does a great job getting off there. I promise I wasn't looking for one where 20 missed a tackle. <laughs> you only had a couple examples in your career. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you grade that one, but we'll, we'll skip that one for the NFL breakdown of Pete Warner for the next level. This is about Dallas Gant trying to get in there, fill some of those shoes and the production that you left behind. He's Pete Warner. Appreciate his insights as he heads on to the next level. Uh, Thanks a lot for joining us again, Pete. Yep, thank you so much. All right, for Pete Warner, I am Austin Ward. We'll see you next time at Letterman Row for Buck IQ.